Weezy out of here. Weezy out of here. What a beautiful day. <laughs> it's getting kind of hot outside. And if you're rich, you're mill on like Odell. Welcome to the Bay Academy. Uh, here we have a problem based on what happened in video. Here, uh, Olaf was in the mountains uh, with Sven in the summer. Uh, he's a conical nose, conical nose, a half full with snow. Uh, weather was very hot, very, very hot. So, snow began to melt into butter and come out tip of nose. Diameter of his nose uh, 6 cm, height is uh, 9 cm, and rate of change of height is 2 cm per minute. Uh, so, uh, what rate is the volume of the butter in his nose leaking? So, we know the diameter is 6, the height is 9. And the rate of change of the height, dh over dt, because the rate of change is derivative, that is 2 centimeters per minute. Okay, and we know it's a conical nose, so therefore the volume would be v equals 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Okay, so now we have to first find what r is. Um, so d, so we know d is equal to 2 times r, which means r is equal to 1 half of d which makes r equal to 3. Okay, um, so now we plug it back into the, we make a ratio of radius and height. So it'll be r over h is equal to 3 over 9, which is equal to 1 third. So r is equal to 1 third h. So now we plug this back in here. So you get v is equal to 1 third pi, 1 third h squared times h. So simplifying that out, it would be 1 third pi, 1 ninth h squared h, which would be 1 over 27 pi h cubed. Now we need to find the derivative. So we need to find the derivative, which is asking for rate of volume, rate mean derivative. So dv over dt, we do not know. That's a weird question mark. Okay, so now we do derivative of this, so we get dv over dt equal to 1 over 27 pi 3 h squared dh dt. Okay, so now we do plug in write the values, h9 dh dt 2, so then we get 1 over 27 pi, oh, we need to simplify this, so this would be 1 over 9 Pi, we get a d, 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 d. Okay, very nice. And we get at h squared dh dt. Plugging back in h and dh dt, we get 1 9 pi, and then the dh is 9, so we get 81, and dh dt 2, so times 2. So they simplify, we get a 9 here. So your answer should be 18 pi, but since it's volume, it's going to be centimeter cubed. Very important, okay? So, centimeter cube per minute, that is your dB over dt. Thank you. We go together, better than birds of a feather in summer. <laughs> got ritualistic, cleansing my soul of addiction for now. Let's go. Okay, so here is question two based on the situation that you saw uh, Olaf was in from the video. Um, Olaf was lying down, embracing the sun. Water was dripping down from the ice wall and it poured onto him, causing him to laugh. His laugh caused an avalanche. From the avalanche, a large ball started rolling down the mountain. Its radius grew at a rate of five feet per second. At what rate was the volume of the ball increasing when the radius was three feet? So we have to write down what we know from the problem. So we know the rate means derivative, and this is the radius. So that would be dr over dt, and it gives us 5 feet per second. And then it also gives us that the radius is 3 feet. And since we know it's a ball, which is a sphere, it will be v is equal to 4 third pi r cubed. Okay, and it says at what rate was the volume, so that means we have to calculate the derivative, which would be dv over dt is equal to 4 pi r squared, this 3 comes down because of the power rule, dr over dt. Okay, so now we just substitute in the values we know, so dr dt is 5, 
the radius is three, so you get dv over dt is equal to four pi times three squared times five, which then you further simplify to get four pi times nine times five, and four times nine times five which is 20, 20 times nine is 180. So you should get dv over dt is equal to 180 pi, and then we have to remember the units, so since this is volume, it would be feet cubed per second. Thank you all. Here is question three, the last question based on what we saw in the video. Um, Olaf manages to run away from the avalanche reaching the town. He stops and sees Elsa 400 feet away. Elsa is very, very upset and shoots ice beam to the sky at 200 feet per second to create permanent winter. How fast did the angle of elevation in radians changing if Olaf sees the ice crystals 2,000 feet in the air? So here we've made a diagram. This is Olaf. That is Elsa, and this is the ice beam, ice crystals, whatever you want to call it, in the air. So let's fill in what we know. He stops and sees Elsa 450 feet away. So we know this is 450. And we know the ice beam is up in the sky 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet in the air. So this will be 2,000. So since this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean triple to find this, the length of this side. We x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. So this we can mark as x, this is y, and this is z. So x equals 450, y equals 2000, and we do not know what z is. Now what you might not see here is that this is a Pythagorean triple. I know, it's pretty surprising. You just divide this by 50 and you get 9 and 40. So 9, 40, and 41. That is a Pythagorean triple right there. So you divided x and y by 50, you have to also divide z by 50. So 41 is equal to z over 50. That means z is equal to 50 times 41, which is 2050. Zero, zero. So that is the length of the hypotenuse. So we can rewrite everything that we know so far. So we know x, let's rewrite here, 2050. So x is 450. Y is 2000, Z is 2050. And we also know from the question that the ice beam is increasing at a rate of 200 feet per second, which is on um, this motion, so which would be Y. So that means DY over DT is equal to 200, okay? So now the very important thing that we have to look at is as asking for the angle of elevation. So this right here is the angle of elevation. We'll just mark it as theta. So the angle of elevation is what we need to find. Uh, so we will set up an equation with the things that we know. So we could do tan theta equal to y over x. Okay, so y constantly changing. We can see the y dt constantly changing, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, and uh, x keeps same. So all of stay same place, and stay same place, same place, okay? So we have, we plug in uh, x into here. So tan theta equal to y over 450 would simplify to 1 for 50 bar. Okay, so uh, now we need to find uh, derivative uh, because it's asking for how fast the angle of elevation changes. So derivative here d theta dt times secant square theta equal to 1 for 50 dy over dt. So here tan is second squared as the derivative. By it is over derivative. Okay. So uh, we need to we need to find what secant squared theta is. So here we look at the we look at the triangle. Okay. First we know second equal to one over cosine. Okay. And we can find cosine cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's our four fifty over twenty fifty, which is. One, so that's the cosine 450 over 2050 
And since the reciprocal, it would be 20, 50 over 4, 50. Now, trust me, you do not have to square that big of a number. We know that this triangle has been scaled up 50 times. So we can just divide these by 50. So you'll get 41 and you'll get 9. So that means your secant theta is 41 over 9. Now you plug that back into equation. So d theta dt times 41 over 9 squared equal 1 for 50. And we know divide dt to 100. So do 100. Okay. So now what we can do here, we can simplify divide by 50. So we get a 9 here, you get a 4 here, and we bring this 41 over 9 squared to the other side. So it will be the reciprocal because we bring it to the other side. Um, so d theta d t equal to 9 over 41 times 9, oh, 9 over 41 squared times 4 over 9. So 9 over 41 squared, it is actually, if I am not mistaken, 81 over 1, 6, 8, 1. Let me just quickly check. 1, 4, ta, ta. yes. It is 1, 6, 8, 1 times 4 over 9. Okay, so we can simplify this. 9 is in the 9, the 9 over here. So to be 4 times that's 36. So d theta over dt equal to 36 over 1, 6, 8, 1 radians per time is second so here is your answer thank you